this is about you know the the adab part the etiquette yeah. part uh, how can we teach it because it's something that has to be again taught at a very uh, earlier level uh, and you know and we're talking about university right now so well, but they're, they're, yeah yeah Please, go ahead. Go ahead. so so the question is that how uh, how much emphasis should we lay on you know having proper adab of speaking to people like you know i can see very few people like you for example if i'm speaking you never speak you know if i'm not, uh, so until i'm finished you only start speaking after that right so this is a very sh sh subtle thing but this is something that comes from sohba the places you've been to uh, the the, the sh sheikh that you've mashaikh that you've uh, you know been with so those things don't come naturally just by reading books it, yeah they so don't. What is your solution? Uh -huh. yeah, I mean, what I, I have to fight that in myself because, I, you know, my my brain. I think, so I have to actually stop myself and and sometimes because somebody when they're talking they give me an idea and I and and so that's something that you know I struggle with and I've interrupted people many many times but I always regret it. You know, because I, I I don't like it, and and uh, that's something. It's just tahdeeb. It takes time, and you have to work on yourself. And like you said, you know, uh, exemplars are really good. The Prophet Sallallahu said that it was from the muru'a of a man, from from his dignity, that he listens to his brother until he finishes. Uh, and so so that's very important. I mean, I would say adab, the problem with adab is it's a very broad word. It has a lot of different meanings in Arabic. And the, the least of which is manners, just good manners. But it's much deeper than that because it's, it's also a recognition of hierarchy. Because you can have good manners and be arrogant. I mean, there are many, many people that have, the British are masters of, of, of having good manners and, uh, and being arrogant, you know, the gentleman, like, so, so the Nazis apparently uh, had very good decorum. Um, so I think it's deep, it's much deeper than just good manners. It's, it's really a recognition, you know, the, the definition of adab in, uh, in literature is putting words in their proper place. So the adib is the person that puts the words in their proper place. And so adab is really about putting things in their proper place. And, and it's also about knowing your own limitations, coming to terms, like all of each one of us at a, at a certain point has to come to terms with the limits of our intellect. You can be deluded and think you're brilliant, but at a certain point you begin to realize how limited you are and how difficult it is to have an opinion about anything. Because in the end, there are much more, more brilliant people that might disagree with you. And so your opinion is always questionable. Like, am I right or am I wrong? I, I hope I'm right, but I could be wrong. And, and so inculcating humility is extremely important, especially intellectual humility, because intelligent people are susceptible to arrogance. It's very dangerous. And so I think, uh, I mean, obviously you want that to start early uh, in, in, uh, in families. And Sufism is really, at the heart of Sufism are these concepts of, uh, of adab. So I think adab is extremely important. Uh, uh, Sayyidina Qibr Atas has written excellent uh, works on adab. So, it needs to be inculcated from an early time. Uh, as people get older, it's harder to break bad habits, but they can be broken. And we all have to work on ourselves, even it doesn't matter what age we are. I mean, Ibn, Ibn, Ibn al-Munkadir, who was the teacher of Imam Malik in Medina, he's one of the great uh, tabi'een. Um, he said, I struggled with myself for 50 years before it finally uh, surrendered. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody like that could say something like that, then... Mm -hmm.